All right. All right. Happy Friday, y'all. Happy Friday. Welcome back to the Friday Night Prepper pre-party show. So good to see everybody. See a couple people already in chat. Thank you so much. I saw Piffs. Piffs. So good to see you, brother. How you been? I hope everything's good for you. Lazarus Long, good to see you. Uh, we're going to give people a couple minutes here to just get through the chat and uh, the uh, commercials, notifications, all that fun stuff. In the meantime, I'll go over a couple little things with y'all. If you are brand new to the channel, we talk about preparedness here, all things preparedness, including foraging, gardening, food self-sufficiency, financial preparedness, all of the above. Uh, and today we're going to be talking about budget, prepping on a budget. Don't worry, I'll get my words together. Prepping on a budget tonight. And if you are new to the channel, the way that we do things here is you can go ahead and give me lots of questions, throw them in capitals. It just makes it easier for me to catch. I don't have great vision. And if you throw it in caps, it makes it a little bit easier. I do periodically go back and forth between what I'm saying and the chat just to make sure that I catch as much of it as I can. Usually have a couple mods show up. So I ask that everybody please be kind to the mods. They give their time freely. They are not paid. So if you have something negative to say about feedback, go ahead and give it to me. And you can put it in chat or you can put it in comments. Uh, just don't be too hateful to people other than me, uh, or I will go ahead and delete your comments or you're just kind of wasting your time there anyways. Uh, what else? I am going to be doing a giveaway, a big giveaway actually at 5,000 subscribers. So we are on our way to that. Uh, there'll be lots of different prizes to that and a couple different ways to win. So you're going to want to stay tuned for that. And I probably will be talking about that more in the live streams to come. And I'll be showing you some of the prizes that we'll be giving up. And if you are out there and you're listening and you would like to sponsor a prize or something like that, either as uh, a channel or if you have a small business that you would like to have mentioned the night that we do the 5,000, 5,000 subscriber giveaway, just reach out to me at businesswithsarge at gmail.com. I'm sure we can work something out. The, um, what else? Next week, I will not be live on Friday next week. Uh, I've got some family stuff going on. It's actually some really good news stuff. So I'm excited about that. And uh, I've got pre-recorded stuff coming for you next week. So you will have a video Friday night at my usual time of 745. Uh, and uh, I promise you I've got something for you. So just uh, bear with me next Friday, and then I'll be back live the Friday after that. All right. I think that's all the, all the stuff for housekeeping. And if you enjoy this video at all tonight, if you get something out of it, please remember to give me a thumbs up. It does help me out in the algorithm. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing if you like what you see. Uh, my times to upload are usually uh, Tuesday nights and then, of course, live streaming on Friday nights. All right. Oh, and if one last thing. Hey, hey, Ungrateful Peasant, good to see you. Um, one last thing. If you would like your channel shouted out, uh, just go ahead and let the mods know, and they'll be happy to do that. Uh, just one of the little things we try to do here when, we, when we're doing our live stream. All right, let's go ahead and get right into it. We've got a couple people in chat right now. Hopefully a few more people show up, but we're going to do it one way or the other. So uh, I got 12, 12, 12 tips for prepping on a budget. First one is do-it-yourself survival kits. So now survival kit isn't necessarily going to be your first prep or it doesn't shouldn't be your first prep, but it is a fun little project to do. And you can, of course, buy pre-made survival kits. Um, you A fun project is to kind of put one together on your own based on what your needs are. Your needs as a prepper are going to be very different than mine. And this also goes for you like your bug out bag. Please, please don't buy a pre-made bug out bag. Make one yourself based on if you're going to do a bug out bag. And, and maybe for what you're prepping for, you don't even need to do that. But you use the stuff that makes sense for you, that you know how to use, that uh, is within your budget. Big, big top, big part of tonight's topic is making sure you stay within your budget, right? So um, some good examples of this is if you go to the Urban Prepper and search for Altoids Tin Survival Kit, that's one of the things Cliff was really well known for. Uh, and then everybody's kind of copied that, which I don't think Cliff minds. Um, you know, an Altoids tin survival kit is kind of a fun little survival kit you can put in your pocket. But if you get into this mindset of like, I don't have to buy everything pre-made, I can come up with my own stuff. And uh, sometimes, you know, sometimes you might want to. Like I, you know, I've talked about the Rhino first aid kit, which is a really excellent first aid kit. But maybe you want to put together your own based on your skill set, based on, you know, what, uh, what, financially you can afford. So uh, that's part of what we're talking about here, right? 
So do it yourself kits, right? Also, like, you know, fire starters, right? And yeah, some of those like you know, fire starters that you can buy from companies are great. They work fantastic, but you can also make your own fire starters. Uh, I was talking to somebody recently who made their own power station. Um, super impressed, way beyond, beyond my skill level, but basically had taken electronic parts and made his own power station, power station to charge phones and uh, run fans and things like that. If there was a power outage, like if you got that kind of skill set, good on you. You're way beyond, you know, the what I could do with that kind of stuff. So use your knowledge, right? So for me, like when talking about same thing here, just topic number one, doing do-it-yourself kits. Um, when I made my bug out bags, uh, I do not include a lot of food on our kits. There's some, um, but I'm a, I'm a forager and I know a lot of plants in my area. And I feel very confident that I can find food along the way until I get to a certain, if I had to, you know, go really far outside my geographic area, then I might start getting into some problems where I don't necessarily recognize a lot, as many of the plants, right? Um, I probably could still find stuff until I get into like the desert and then it's going to get really complicated for me or an Alpine area like Alaska or something like that, because I just don't know those areas well. Um, but, you know, from most of the stuff east of the Mississippi, I could probably find some, some food along the way pretty good at that actually and i challenge myself i go out and i practice that but we're going to come back to the foraging here in just a second uh stocking up number two number two stocking up on non-perishables now this is where i think it can get a little overwhelming it can get a little expensive and this is sometimes where people get intimidated they might see other people's pantries their prepper pantries here on youtube and they might think well i need all of that right now well, what you need to understand is that a lot of us who are doing the YouTube prepping niche have been doing this for years. I've been, you know, I've been preparing for way longer than it was called prepping. Like, I think that term kind of became main, mainstream with that Doomsday Preppers show. But growing up, you know, this was just something that how we were raised to think about, like that, you know, plan ahead, have some foods have some, you know, things for emergencies that the power can go out, you know, and things like that. And I've talked about this before, like my background and where I, where I learned some of this stuff. But if you're brand new to it, yeah, I can, I get that it can seem pretty overwhelming. Hey, Broken Bush, Bushcraft, good to see you. I get that it can feel overwhelming. I really do. And you have to remember that like some of the stuff that you're seeing on here, like when you see some of the kit that I show, yeah, I've got a pretty nice kit, but I have I didn't start this year. I've been doing this a long time, right? And started seriously getting hardcore into it like 14 or 15 years ago. So I didn't have a great kit starting out. I used what I could. I used what, what my budget allowed for. And over time, I accumulated better and better stuff until like I finally got to a place where I really like my kit. I like my bug out bag. I like what I have in my bug out bag. I like the knives that I have. I like the flashlights that I have. But I didn't start out like that. I started out with very affordable stuff. And same thing goes for your prepper pantry, right? So if you're just starting out, copy canning, right? What's copy canning? Most of you have heard of this, but there's probably a few people that haven't yet. So copy canning is when you go to the grocery store, start thinking about your non-perishables. This is like your Kraft mac and cheese, your pasta, your bags of rice, your bags of beans, your canned fruits and vegetables, your canned soups, your, you know, all that stuff that honey, stuff that stays good for a really long time. And each time you go grocery shopping, just buy a little bit more, right? So if you normally buy, just as an example, five cans of uh, marinara sauce for your family, right? Like we eat pasta here a lot. We love pasta. Um, so if you buy five, buy six and then put one back and write a date on it that you bought it or whatever and put it back. And then next time you go, maybe you're going to buy another one or you can buy an extra box of pasta. And over time, it does build up, right? And then you're going to rotate it, of course. So as stuff has been on your shelf for a while, you're going to keep moving it forward. And then you're eventually going to start using your backup supply as part of your regular supply. So it does build up. Yes, it takes a little bit of time, but don't get overwhelmed thinking like I have to have this giant prepper pantry like all these YouTubers that I see. I guarantee you nobody started out like that. They really didn't. Okay. Unless they somehow inherited it or somebody gifted it to them. No, nobody started like that. So that was number two. Uh, number three, water conservation. Now, this is one where I think there's definitely some opportunities to do this very, very low cost. 
Uh, if you live in an area of the country where your water, drinking water out of your tap is is uh, drinkable, right? And there are, unfortunately, there are a few places in the United States where this water out of the tap is not safe to drink. That should not happen in the United States. That should not happen. And it is a great failure of our system that we let our, our citizens down like that. Um, don't get me started. I'll do a whole stream about that if you get me going on that. But if you live in a part of the country where your your water out of your tap is safe to drink, start bottling it up, right? And bottle it up tight. Again, put a date on it. Um, you can put a drop of bleach in there or whatever if you want. Seal it up real good. You can store some in the freezer uh, and that will hold for a very long time. Um, or if you just got it like in a closet or whatever, or if you got it somewhere else, just start rotating it or use it for other needs or whatever. Uh, but you know, the water out of the tap really in most cases is as good as the bottled water, right? So you don't have to go out and buy a pallet full of bottled, bottled water. You can do this with, you know, bottles that you save around the house. Now, if you're using something that you had for like, say, um, I don't know, soda, whatever, we don't drink a ton of soda pop in this house, but, um, I did have a Sprite tonight. Um, we, I kind of have it like once in a while as a treat. Uh, save those, right? Save those bottles and you can use those for, for stuff like that. But just make sure you wash it out really good before you're using it for your water storage. You also, you know, on, on a related note, you don't have to go out and buy those water bricks and things like that that you see. If you want them and your budget allows for them, that's fine. It's a great way to store water, but it's not necessary. There's, there's definitely more affordable ways to do it. So just kind of think about that, right? Um, say on the same lines, right? If you are thinking about your water safety and your water storage, Think about how am I going to purify water, right? So I have shown you on this channel several different, very fancy water filters. Uh, some of those are not cheap, right? Some of those are not cheap. So what's the cheapest way to go on this? Well, um, you know, some water purification tablets, probably some bleach, actually bleach, uh, and, and learn your ratio uh, of how much bleach you add to water. Of course, boiling water will kill most viruses and bacteria. It won't remove the heavy metals, but neither will bleach. Right. So so, the you know, when you're thinking about like heavy metals and things like that, yeah, you probably are going to need to either build yourself a filter. And there's plans on the Internet for how to build a really good charcoal filter or uh, maybe that's one of the big the first things that you make an investment in. But in the beginning of it, you know, store some water and store a cheap or relatively cheap way to purify water. Right. And again, remember, boiling water will kill a lot of the viruses and bacteria and things like that. So so that's. That's a big money saver right there. Uh, I'm not seeing any questions yet. So if you're just tuning in right now, I see a few people have popped in. Go ahead. And uh, if you want to say hi, say hi, especially if you're new. I love meeting new people on the channel. If you have any questions, throw them in caps so that I can catch them. Really appreciate that. Next one, number four, learn some basic skills. All right. So this is let's let's talk about this one for a few minutes. We've talked about this at different times during the channel, but like your churches, your local churches, a lot of times will offer classes on first aid for free. First aid is a proper skill. Do not neglect that. If you get an opportunity to take a mental health first aid skill, take that. How much of those mental health first aid videos have I done and Lee and uh, Sassy Gal prepping? Um, you know, there's there's content out here on YouTube that you can watch for free. Mental health first aid is part of prepping as well. We talked about that on the week, last week's live stream, right? So you can get some stuff just by watching that one. Um, gardening, right? So let's, oh, iodine. Thank you. Good one. No, no worries. Yeah, I appreciate that. Gar, uh, I having some iodine and that has multiple uses, right? First aid uses too. So purify, purifying water and first aid. Um, Gardening, right? So if you're brand new to gardening, you, what you need to understand is there's a lot of people out there. I see them on the forums and Reddit and Facebook forums for prepping that store garden seeds like your, your seed bank, but they've never practiced it. So what you need to know is that gardening has a huge learning curve. If you've never done it before, the time is not, time to start learning that is not when there's a giant food shortage. The time to start learning it is now. And what I recommend is if you don't have a big budget, Ask your friends, ask your friends. There's seed swaps that go on in, in towns. It a lot of times at the local extension office, right? And if you show up and you say, hey, I'm brand new to garden. I'm sorry, I didn't bring it. I don't have any garden seeds to share. I guarantee you that they're going to get, people are going to be like, let me get you started. 
let me give you some seeds. You know, here's some bean seeds. Here's some tomato seeds. Here's some pepper seeds, right? That's just how gardeners are. We love getting people into it. Uh, so, so do that. There's tons and tons of videos on YouTube to learn how to do gardening. I've got plenty here on my channel. I think I've got like over 75 different gardening videos. Uh, Palmetto, Premiered, Palmetto Prepared has a ton of gardening videos. Check out his stuff. Um, you know, there's tons of great gardening channels on here. Go to the library. We're going to talk about the library here a little bit later and get some of those uh, gardening books. I learned a lot of stuff from that. You know, my, my mom was the one who started me on gardening, but I picked up stuff along the way. Some of that I picked up from gardening books. Some of it I picked up from talking to other gardeners. Some of it I picked up from... Um, my mother-in-law, uh, you know, so, so there's always more to learn too. Like I'm always, I watch Anthony Palmetto prepared videos because he grows some stuff that I don't grow and I'm always learning stuff from him. Right. So, uh, it's free. The knowledge is free and getting your seeds to get started can be free or cheap if you follow some of the, uh, some of the things that I said. Okay. So, uh, and that's one, get on it now. Please do not wait till there's a huge food shortage to try to learn that. You're, you're not going to do well if you, if you do that. Um, yeah, mindset is so important too. When I talk about that a little bit uh, with, the, with the mental health first aid, like when everybody, you know, we all like to think, oh, we're big, bad preppers. We're tough. We're survivalists, you know. And yeah, we probably are more resilient than a lot of other people. But uh, I, having lived through tornadoes and things like that, when that tornado is bearing down on your neighborhood, all of a sudden, like you get your anxiety is going to shoot up pretty high. I promise you that. And uh, and I've got good mental health first aid skills. And I can tell you, even I was like, you know, pretty jacked up when those tornadoes were in my neighborhood. So um, mental mindset, survival mindset. We talked about before the show alone. The thing that takes out most of the competitors on a loan is not necessarily lack of food or a lack of shelter or, uh, you know, other things. It's their mindset is eventually being alone for so long takes a toll. Right. And these are people who are much more experienced with that kind of, you know, long term outdoor survival than I am. And so, um, you know, you got to you got to really figure that in your, your ability to think positive and your will to survive when there's something big going on is huge. Right. You can't give up. Never give up. Um, basic self-defense. I'm still on basic skills. Right. So basic self-defense. If you can't afford to take some self-defense classes, maybe, you know, a friend that's that's uh, trained and and you just say, hey, can you know, can you teach me a couple things like how, what to do if somebody grabs me from behind? What to do? If somebody's choking me. What to do? How to protect myself from a right punch, right? That's the number one way. A push or a right punch is like the two most common ways that a fight starts. So you at least know how to, you need to know how to defend against a push. And you need to know how to defend against a right punch. Um, if you don't know how to do those things, talk to somebody who's had some training, right? Have them show you a few things. You can, a lot of places, a lot of places will do like their first class is free. Why not take advantage of that, right? Go take a couple free classes at the different, you know, martial arts studios in your area, right? And then like, you know, they're going to try to sell you a package, of course, afterwards, that's their business, right? That's how they make money. So maybe you talk to them and say, hey, I don't have a lot of money. See what they can do. Maybe they, maybe they have scholarships. Some schools do. Maybe they have, you know, a payment plan. Maybe they have a different way that you can you can make that happen if you're really into it. But you, you do need to know some basic first aid, um, some basic self-defense skills as part of preparedness as well. Uh, foraging, right? Foraging. So there is, I've got over 100 foraging videos here on my channel. Uh, there's some other great foraging channels on here. Foraging, Forager Chick, a good friend of mine. Awesome channel. Check her channel out. Forager Chick is amazing. Oh, there she is right now. There's my friend. In fact, um, can you, uh, Forager Chick, can you drop your link for everybody in the chat? I really appreciate that. I see two. Uh, uh, Southeast Stack. Oh, uh, FSP, Father Sub Prepper. Good to see you. Appreciate you. Uh, Wayne, let me see here. I see too much on positive mindset, not enough on willpower and the will to endure. I have seen a lot of people with positive mindsets crash hard when met with reality. Yes. Yeah, so it's that, that will to survive is huge, right? So you think about, um, the Andes crash, the Andes plane crash, right? And these people were going to starve to death if they didn't turn to cannibalism, right? How strong is your will to survive? It's easy for me to sit here with a full belly because right, we just had pizza tonight in our house and I had a, 
uh, a Sprite and, you know, my belly's full and I'm happy and I, I feel, you know, really good. What if I hadn't eaten in three weeks, right? <laughs> I'm not encouraging anybody to go out and, 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 and do, I'm not endorsing cannibalism, but where's your will to survive? Where does it end? Would you do that to survive? Would you eat, you know, a dead, a dead body? Not trying, trying to get you gross here, right? But that's what those people did to survive, right? So how strong is your will to survive? And I'm, again, I'm not encouraging that or anything like that. I'm just saying that's huge. It's Maybe it's the biggest factor is as to who makes it or not. And here's Forager Chicks uh, channel right here. Definitely check her channel out. She is awesome. And she's got some. And actually, Forager Chick is the one who taught me how to inoculate mushrooms. Uh, so uh, really, really cool person. Definitely want to learn from her. So we talked about foraging. Um, so basically, learn some basic skills. And if you all think of other skills that are free or cheap to learn, go ahead and throw them in chat for everybody. By the way, if you're watching this on replay or if you're just tuning in now, if you like what you see, please consider giving me a thumbs up. And uh, if you got any questions, go ahead and drop them into the chat there. If you're watching it on replay, drop the questions into comments. I'll do my best. I, try, I do try to answer every single comment. Uh, fitness is number five, fitness. So this is one that people get kind of salty about when you talk about fitness and why fitness is part of preparedness as well, right? You know, I'm not here to judge anybody. I have struggled with my weight just like everybody else. It is an ongoing battle throughout my entire life of like gaining weight because I like food. Like I really like food. I like it a lot. But then like realizing like, uh oh, it's getting a little too high now. Um, I got to shake this weight off. And so I, I do what I got to do to shake it back off. So uh, I'm not judging anybody. But if you are not healthy in that way, if you're not getting activity, physical activity, if you're not exercising, what you need to know is that if something big happens, your level of fitness is a factor. Is it the be all end all? No, but it is a factor, right? So think about like if a tornado ran through your town and you've got giant tree limbs on your house or uh, landed on a neighbor or whatever, like, yeah, your fitness is going to be a factor. Cleaning up after a hurricane here sucks, y'all. It sucks. It's exhausting. You know, Mrs. Sarge and I, We'll have to work like a full day of cleanup just for our yard, just for our yard um, to, uh, and we don't have a huge yard. You know, I live in the city. Um, physical fitness matters. It absolutely matters. And like when you talk about other kind of things, like, you know, uh, if we had like a, a really bad pandemic or something like that, your level of fitness, if you get sick is a factor too. It's, it can be the factor that determines whether or not you survive from that. So try to get as healthy as you can. Again, not trying to judge anybody with this, and there's no reason to get salty about it. It's, it's just a fact that it is part of preparedness, okay? So what are some options for you, free or cheap? You don't have to go out and join the gym necessarily. You don't have to go and take a yoga class. Um, those are great things, yeah. But you can, there's many other options. Uh, my friend Fu, the... Um, uh, the Tattooed Ronin is his channel here. He's been on my channel before. Some of you have seen him before. Uh, Daniela Joy, uh, Augie Silver Fitness, uh, Celine Ferocious, who sometimes comes into our chat here, um, all do fitness stuff on their channels, right? And all of it is stuff that you don't have to be in a gym, right, to do. So what's if, if you've watched some of my live streams with some of these people before, what's the number one way that you can get fit without any expensive equipment in the comfort of your own home? We'll see if anybody can answer that in chat, and, and, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come back to you in a second, okay? Let's say hi to a couple people here. Maccabeus, good to see you, my friend. Maccabeus, uh, if you all haven't seen his channel, he has a great saying that I, that I really think people should check out, and that is, um, this is still America, act accordingly, right? Like, so uh, that can apply to a lot of things, but, you know, treat each other with some respect. And be responsible for yourself is some of the aspects of like, this is still America, act accordingly. Um, maybe Mac will throw in some other uh, ideas with it, but it is, it, it's a great mindset. And it's a good reminder too. Penny Pinching, Penny Pinching Preppers, good to see you, brother. Oh yeah, that's a great point right there, Broken Bushcraft. Yeah, so how many of us have built these, you know, like, 75 pound bug out bags that's got everything in it but the kitchen sink okay 
you think you can carry that? How how often are you hiking with it? How often have you taken it out and actually tested that? Have you ever tested it in extreme weather conditions like 90, 95 degree heat, like many of us are getting right now in the in the south, right? or or in extremely cold conditions, right? You know, so uh, you need to know what your true carry weight is, and it's probably not as much as as most people think it is. Yeah, and so walking is a great way to get started if you haven't uh, been exercising in a long time and you're out of shape. You know, if you uh, if you can walk, uh, just do as much as you can when you when you need to take a break, take a break. And if you're really out of shape, yeah, do it in small increments. Do a five minute walk. When you can do the five minute walk with only a little bit of sweat, then do a ten minute walk. When you can do that with a little, only a little bit of sweat, then do a twenty minute walk. You've got to work your way up if you haven't done this in a while check with your doctor, right? Because if you really haven't exercised in a long time and you've got super high blood pressure and super high cholesterol, you know, maybe this 95 degree heat isn't the time for you to go for a 25 mile run. Maybe you're going to start inside with your air conditioner on and just do a little bit to kind of get yourself started, start to acclimate your body to exercise again. Um, salty when I'm sweaty. Yeah, me too, man. Me too. Kentucky Survivalist, it's good to see you. Happy Friday, Bougie, Bougie Prepper. Bougie Prepper, good to see you. How you doing, Bougie? Walking is awesome. Yep, um, definitely adding the incline is going to put a little bit more work on it. You can put some some weight on your back, like your backpack. Yep, yep. And if you haven't done it in a while, just just start slow, but work your way up. Don't give up. Don't give up. All right, so nobody had it. So the number one, let's see. So walking, yeah, I would say walking is a great choice for those of you who said that. The, the exercise I was actually thinking about was was burpees, right? Now burpees, burpees are tough. Burpees are tough. and But burpees require no exercise. Burpees require no equipment. You don't need a gym membership. And there's videos out there. Go to someone like, uh, Daniela Joy or the Tattooed Ronin, and they will show you how to do on their channel. They will show you how to do burpees. It is considered by many fitness experts to be the perfect exercise because it hits your whole body. And uh, you may start out, maybe you can only do two. Okay, no problem. Do your two. Then, and then after three days of doing two, try to do three. Work your way up. Um, a lot of people that are in prisons because maybe they're confined to an area where they can't really get exercise equipment, except for maybe a little bit each week. They do burpees. It is the perfect exercise. So burpees uh, know how to do it. And if you ever get confined to your home for a while because of a situation, you still want to stay physically fit. You know, burpees are fantastic. Push-ups are great too. Um, yep, exactly. I can't believe I forgot it. Um, burpee, Uncle Burpee Yoga. Burpee Uncle Yoga? Burpee. Uncle Burpee Yoga. He does, that's that's what he does. That's what his whole channel is about, is burpees. And he does like hundreds a day. But now he worked his way up to that. I can't do hundreds a day. Maybe you can, I don't know. But but he does, and he he's worked his way up to it. And he's got the videos to show you. They're like three hours long where he's just doing burpees nonstop. Um, this dude is like my age, and he is way more fit than I am. So definitely check out his channel. Yeah, they're tough, man. They're they're tough, but they are the perfect exercise. Squat presses, yep. Military presses. Pisaki's doing his push-ups. Good stuff. Planking is another one that's good. Planking will build a lot of your core strength around your abdomen. Um, when you first start out, maybe you can only do 10 seconds of planking. Don't be surprised. Um, work your way up. So do 10 seconds for a few days and then try to do 15. Do that for a few days and then try to do 20, you know. Uh, at one point, I was able to do, not now, not now. At one point, I was able to do, I think, like a four-minute plank. I was in, That was when I was in martial arts and, you know, was training all the time and I was a lot more fit than I am now. Um, but you could certainly work your way back up to a plank. Anybody can do planking with a little bit of practice and patience. Yeah, and that's another suge great suggestion there. Wayne says uh, you can use gallons of water or a five-gallon jug uh, in, as to substitute for like um, the kind of like kettlebells and things like that. There's a good one there too, and that is a workout. Find an old tractor tire and flip it around in the yard. That is a workout. 
All right, moving on to the next one. Great suggestions, everybody. Thank you. All right, next one is number six. This one can cost a little bit of money, but um, this one might be worth the investment if you have a little bit of money to, to put towards it is food preservation. Now, that includes canning, um, dehydrating, fermenting, and uh, why do we want to learn these? Well, this is how, like, if you're growing food from your garden or you're hunting or you're fishing or you're foraging, this is how you're going to preserve your food for a long time, right? So out of those, fermenting is probably the most affordable um, and you just need some jars and um, uh, vinegar. Um, I don't have any videos on that. Sorry. Um, if anybody else has a video on that for your channel, go ahead and throw it, drop it in chat. Um, dehydrating, in my opinion, I do probably more dehydrated than any of these. Uh, I, I bought a Nesco dehydrator and I don't remember what it costs. Let me see. Let me pull it up on Amazon right now. And I've had this thing for over 12 years and it has had no problems whatsoever. So a freeze dryer is much more expensive. And that is another option for those people who have that kind of budget. But a, but a dehydrator, um, so the one I got is it's now for $85. Okay, so... This is a good investment. This, you know, if you wanted to put a little bit of money into your preps, this is a good one. And so you can pretty much take most of your stuff out of your garden and dehydrate it and then put it in a jar and put it in a uh, cabinet where it's kind of dark. I'll, yep, that's a good suggestion too, Broken Bushcraft. Let me talk about that in a second. So I'm going to drop a link here. This is an Amazon affiliate link. So if you use it, I get uh, a small commission and I have to tell you that. So that is the dehydrator that I use. There we go. Um, yeah, the Excalibur ones are really nice. They're a little bit more pricey than the Nesco ones. Um, yeah, and that's a good suggestion, Forager Chick. If you have friends who do this, it's just like the gardening. We, we like to teach other people how to do this stuff. Canning is a lot of fun. It's way more time consuming than dehydrating, um, which is why I pretty much do most of my stuff with uh, dehydrating. Sorry, just reading your comments. Um, so like all your garden herbs, throw them in the dehydrator. I guarantee you after one season of gardening, if you planted some oregano, basil, and thyme, and uh, rosemary, and dill, you're going to have just from one season and then dehydrating it, you're going to have like years worth of spices. You won't have to buy spices for years. Um, you can make uh, a solar dehydrator. Rogan, uh, Morgan Rogue Preparedness has a video on that. There's probably some other videos out there on how to make a solar dehydrator. Uh, doesn't require any electricity. You can dehydrate a lot of stuff just by hanging it in a dry room. Uh, but watch it. You know, you're just going to need to make sure it doesn't, it's not getting mold or anything like that on it. A lot of your herbs and spices can be de dehydrated that way. Uh, you can dehydrate your herbs and spices between two paper towels is another way to do it. Um, if you live in a not so humid environment, you can do some of that in the sun. So this is a really, oh, sauerkraut, sauerkraut's a great one. Um, there it is, Burpee, and I, I got them right now. Burpee Yoga Uncle. Um, Unc, can you link your uh, one of your videos for how to do burpees, please? Uh, we were just talking about that right before you got in here. So... Yeah, so preserving food is is a great prepper skill. Actually, I think all preppers should learn how to do that, at least one of those methods, at least one. Um, all right, number seven. Moving on to number seven. Uh, seven. Seven. Uh, bartering and trading. This is a lot of, you know, it's it surprises me that how many questions come up about, like, well, how would you know how much a silver dollar is worth? Just as an example, or how would you know how to barter and trade? Here's how you do it. You go to a flea market. And you start talking to the vendors at the flea market. And if you see a pocket knife that you like or something like that, uh, or a silver coin that you like, you know, ask them what the price is. Offer them 20% lower. They're probably going to reject that, but they might come back with some with a price that's a little bit lower than they had, right? Um, you can also barter and trade uh, skills, right? So let's say we had a really bad prolonged situation where the system was breaking down. And uh, I had a neighbor who uh, somebody in their family was having a really hard time 
with their mental health. Well, I'm, I'm a mental health therapist. So they may say, you know, Sarge, can you talk to him or her? And I would say, yeah, I'll, I definitely can do that. Can you help me with this? I've got a leak in my roof and I'm really not good at repairing that, you know, or something like that. So learn how to have those conversations as well. Uh, but how do you learn it? You just you know, practice, talk to people. Hey, what would you willing be willing to take for this? How, you know, um, hey, I don't have, you know, I, I really like your pocket knife. I don't have $30. Would you take a Morgan silver dollar instead at bartering, right? So, you, you know, you just have to kind of practice it. Yard sales is another great place to do that. You know, when you go to a yard sale, people are looking to get rid of their stuff. Ask them how much they're willing to take for it and offer them a little bit lower, offer them a trade, see what they say. Worst case scenario is they're going to say no. I was, um, when I first started getting into silver and gold, um, I was going around to like estate sales and yard sales. And um, before I really like narrowed in on the coins, I would look for like things like silver candlesticks and things like that. And, uh, you know, people generally were wanting more for it than what it was really worth because they have an emotional attachment to it. And I would say, well, I can't give you $100 for those silver candlesticks. I'll give you, I don't know, $30 for them, right? And they'll say, I can't let it go for that much. I'm like, okay, no problem. I totally understand. Come back at the end of the day. I guarantee you those silver candlesticks that they thought were worth $100 are still there. Let's try again. I, now maybe now you come up a little bit. And you say, hey, I know you wouldn't take 30 Best I can do is 40. Would you take 40? They say no, then fine. Don't overpay for it, you know. Um, yard sales and estate sales are great for that. I love that, man. That's awesome. That's awesome. And nothing tastes as good. Like, the canned goods you buy in the store don't taste nearly as good as stuff you've canned yourself. Yeah, and that's true. Like the the value of um, of what something is uh, is going to vary from person to person. That is right. There you go. I love that. So bartering homemade bread for some ground beef, right? So maybe you have chickens and you have tons of chicken eggs, and your neighbor has tomatoes. Let's talk, right? Yeah, and if you know if you're not if like some people don't, I know some people in the community don't have any alcohol in the house for a reason. Um, but if you do alcohol, there's definitely a market for it. There's definitely going to be, especially if the, if the stores are closed, there are going to be people who are looking for that. Um, there's a good little exercise routine there from uh, Wayne, the ungrateful peasant. All right. So here's Superman burpees from burpee yoga uncle. I'm going to leave that up for a minute. God is great. Good to see you. Appreciate you tuning in all the way from Japan. Japan is 108 degrees with 85% humidity. You're a little bit hotter than us. We're pretty hot here right now. We're, we're, we're hanging in like the high 90s with a high degree of humidity too. Our heat index is, is up there around 110. Um, all right, I'm going to go on to number eight. And this is one Penny Pinching Prepper is really good at, which is repurposing old items, right? So get creative, find some useful... Find some, find some alternative uses for stuff you no longer need. So if you haven't seen Penny, Princh, Penny Pinching Prepper's channel, uh, definitely check his channel out too. And uh, he's got some really cool ideas, really, really way more creative with the stuff than I am. Some people have that. I, you know, it's, it's like a part of the brain that for me is just not really active. Um, I can do a couple little things where I can like repurpose stuff, but I don't usually see it. Other people can look at something. They say, oh, I could totally use that for that, right? So one example of something that I did use a while back was um, we had some tires that did not fit on any of our vehicles. And I tried to sell them. Nobody wanted them. It was a really odd size of tires. I don't remember what it was, so don't ask me. And so uh, ultimately, it was like nobody would take them. So, so what I did was I turned them into uh, planters, right? Now, I didn't plant food into them. I planted flowers into them. But flowers are good for what? the bees and the bees also will populate uh, pollinate my garden right so it encourages bees to come to my property and then my bees will go and hit the um the uh the vegetables and the fruit trees and stuff like that so um i don't have a video of it unfortunately but basically i'll try to describe it you cut like uh pattern into the tire and then it folds out and it looks like a blossoming flower right and then you um 
put it on the ground, you fill it with like dirt or compost, or I'm sorry, dirt and compost. Um, and then you're going to plant whatever flowers you're in and you want to put into there or flower bulbs. Uh, flower bulbs are great because they'll come back year after year after year. Uh, and then um, just put a little bit of comp not compost, um, cypress bark mulch or something like that on top just to kind of give it some, some decent water retention so it doesn't dry out. You don't have to water it as much. And boom, you know, now I've got like these, they, and you can paint them, right? So it doesn't look like a tire. You can paint them yellow or white or you can paint them multicolors. And it actually, if you do this, it looks like a really cool planter. A lot of people ask me, like, what is that? That's a tire. And they're like, no way, that's not a tire. I'm like, look at it closer. And uh, <clears throat> that's about the extent of me being able to repurpose stuff. But that is a great way to save some money, too, is just kind of think about, like, what do I have around the house that I was just going to throw out? Is there another use for this, right? That is creative prepping. All right. We are getting near the end here. I've got, I think, four more. Number nine, self-reliance skills. Self-reliance skills. So what do I mean by this? So this might mean like basic auto repair, right? This might mean how to sew, right? What if the stores were closed and you couldn't get new clothes, right? Wouldn't it be kind of handy to know how to sew some clothes and make repairs? What if the mechanics are not showing up and you need to repair uh, your vehicle? If you've got a vehicle that's running in such a bad scenario uh, or a small appliance or your fan, right? Like, you know, maybe I'm running a fan off my solar generator um, and then the fan starts to kick out. Do I know how to repair something small like that? These are all skills that you can learn on YouTube for free, right? Most of this anyway. Um, and, uh, you know, your extension center, if you've got a county extension center where you live or something like that, a lot of times there's like classes and groups where they'll teach people stuff like that. Um, so yeah, Radio Jonesy is good to see you. Here's uh, another one from Burpee Yoga Uncle. This is 50 different variations of burpees. Make sure you all are checking this out. God is great. Quit drinking. That is awesome. Awesome. Good for you, man. Uh, I've, I, I cut way back. I, I hardly, I'll have, you know, some beer socially and things like that right now. Um, I just, it's not my thing anymore. You know, I drank more in my twenties. I had fun, maybe too much fun, but I just kind of just doesn't really do it for me now. Um, I'd rather, I'd rather watch a movie with my wife. I'd rather go gardening. I'd rather go hiking, but, but I don't, I don't hate beer, you know, like I will have beer with friends and stuff like that, especially like a small craft beer or something like that, a local brew. 112 where burpee yoga uncle is alcohol does have some medicinal purposes that's right um and uh yeah not everybody wants to have it in their house for good reasons totally understand that uh yeah and herbal tinctures and also like alcohol especially like whole grain alcohol can be used to make certain tinctures and things like that's something to keep in mind um i don't have any videos on that kind of stuff uh, but it's certainly out there on YouTube on how to make different like herbal uh, medicinal tinctures. All right, Penteki, have a great night. Appreciate you. And yeah, Burpee Yoga Uncle says, check the 50 variation one. There's endless varieties. It's the best overall exercise on the planet. Swimming is best, but you need water. Yep, exactly. You're right. Yeah, and you got to consider stuff like that too. Like if it's a really bad situation like SHTF or without rule of law or something like that, you know, um, when you start getting into that, maybe you're going to only barter with people that you know or trust, or if you are going to barter, you're going to do it far away from your house. You know, so I know like when Argentina had their economic collapse, there was places where people could barter, like it was kind of like flea markets. And people would go there and they bring whatever they're going to barter there, not like out of their house. Yep, it can be used for uh, medical sterilization and starting fires too. Yeah, rowing is a heck of a workout. Absolutely. Yep, and if you're near water, maybe that's something you think about. Maybe it is, it's something to, that you, you make sense to have a little rowboat or a canoe or a kayak. And a uh, good suggestion there. So if you are going to make a little investment in burp, in uh, workout equipment, Burpee Yoga Uncle says um, it would be a competition kettlebell. 
Um, I would say what I really like for my at home workouts is the uh, the what are they called? The bands. They uh, they're like stretchy bands, and you could do like all kinds of different exercises with that. Uh, and that was a suggestion that Tattooed Ronan had given me, uh, and I really like them. I actually have them in my office. So like if I want to get a little lunchtime workout in in my office, I can shut my door and do some stuff with that. Awesome stuff there. All right, going on to the next one then. So that's your self-reliance skills. Um, and, you know, even like if you're not in an SHTF situation, you should know how to jumpstart a car. You should know how to change a flat tire. Those would be the two minimum, like bare minimum. If you were going to add two more in, term, in terms of like automobile skills, I would say how to change your oil would be number three. Yeah, you can go and get it done, but you should know how to do it. And, um, and then if I was going to add one more, it would be um, how to change your brake pads. <clears throat> but minimum, bare minimum, you should know how to jumpstart your car. You should know how to change your tire. If you don't know how to do those, get on YouTube, learn how to do it, or ask somebody that, in, that you're friendly with to show you how to do it. You need to know those. All right, Robin, to number 10. We've got three more here. Number 10, knowledge sharing. Engage with others who are prepping experience to gain insights, learn from their practices. And this is free. This is free. Find the other people that you connect with. Find your tribe, right? So how do we do this? Well, I, I gave some examples earlier. You might go to your county extension office. Maybe there's a meetup in your area, like a canning meetup, right? Maybe there's a, a radio, an amateur radio club in your area, right? This is where you're going to find other preppers. And yeah, it starts slow because, you know, I know people are, are cautious about like letting other people know they're a prepper. Obviously, those of us who are on here on YouTube have like forfeited that. But um that was for the purpose of sharing, sharing knowledge. It was a risk that we took, right? But, it, and I know that most people don't want to share that. Totally understand it. So start slow. You know, you start asking questions like, man, you ever worry about these, all these storms we're getting? See what they say. Their response is going to give a pretty good indicator if they're a prepper or not. You, maybe you share a little bit of like, hey, I bought this solar generator. You know, what do you know about this brand, right? And they, maybe they, maybe you start over time, you build up that trust and you know, like, hey, this is somebody that I want in my mutual support group right? Trust has to come to a part of it. You know, nobody can go lone wolf. If we get into a really bad situation, you're going to have to sleep at some time. You're going to need some friends. You're going to need some allies. You're going to need some people that you can trust. In our case, that's our neighbors. We, we have a pretty good group with our neighbors and we have some people that live fairly close enough to us that we're all walking distance. And I have some people outside of the area too, in case we needed to bug out, but um, it's okay to start slow and like build trust and, and, you know, you don't have to share everything all at once. You don't have to show them your giant prepper pantry and, you know, all your firearms and all these other things to start out. Wait till, you know, wait till you build a little bit of trust. And then maybe you say, hey, uh, do you like to go to the range? Do you want to go to the range next week? Feel them out. See how they feel about it. Okay. Yeah, there is such a thing as there's people out there who, who say they're going to go and target people who have stuff. These people are not preppers. They, you know, they'll use terms like werewolf prepper or raider or stupid team in terms like that. That's not prepping. That is not being prepared. These people are predators and uh, they uh, it's not a good strategy because if you read some of Selko's material about people who acted like that in uh, during the fall of the Soviet Union, things don't end well for people who try to um, victimize other people. Eventually enough people get sick of it and they get dealt with. And we'll just leave it at that. Yeah, that's a good skill to have too is, I mean, there's less and less cars that are using it, but um, it is a good idea to know how to drive a stick. Um, uh, I know how to do it. I haven't had a stick in years, but I'm pretty sure that like in a couple minutes, I, I, I know how to do it. You know, you, yeah, if you're not used to it, your timing could be a little bit off. We can get a little grindy and stuff like that, but I'm sure I could get it back in like less than five minutes. Um. And that was kind of fun learning that, honestly. Like, driving a stick is fun, you know. If you haven't done it, you really should try it. It's it's like you have a lot more control over the vehicle. And um, it's just, yeah, it's a fun skill. Uh, all right, so we did knowledge sharing. Uh, next one, number 11. Your library is a resource. Remember that. You know, you can go to the library and check out tons of books and materials and videos and, and magazines in some cases, right? 
And it is, if they don't have the book that you're looking for, they often will try to find it and order it for you, right? So don't forget. And now libraries can do stuff like uh, for the um, magazines. And I think some libraries will do it for movies too. There's a way to even do that digitally from your home where you can like check out magazines from your home. Um, so don't neglect your library as a resource. There's great maps at the library of your city. Think about that. There's great knowledge of the history of your city, how things were built, okay? Think about that, right? So uh, the library is a tremendous resource. Do not sleep on that. You do not have to go out. Yeah, we all like to have our prepper, prepper library, uh, our personal prepper library, right? And you, over time, you probably will build that. But when you're starting out, maybe you don't have $700 to drop on books. Get them out of the library, right? Um, learn that way. And that's also going to like, you may find one you're like, okay, this one was okay. And then you get the next one. You're like, man, this one's really good. I want this in my proper library. Write it down. And when you have the money, you get it. Okay. Um, all right. Before I go to the last one here, let me go back to... Uh, comments here. I agree with that, um, Wayne. Um, you know, one one boom boom stick, I don't think is enough. Um, I would personally, my recommendation is have enough to to put one in the hands of everybody in your local neighborhood that you trust. Yep, that's it right there. And I've talked about that before. Like when we have hurricanes here, looters think it's a free for all. It's not. It's not. It's not good. And so the you know police are going to be real busy handling other stuff in situations like that. What do we do in our neighborhood? I know who I can trust. We stay in contact with each other. We take shifts, right? So the last hurricane that we had here, um, I took one of the night shifts, and uh, and Mrs. Sarge said, "Come and get me at 4 a.m." Well, I was doing fine, so I. I Went through to like at eight o'clock when she started stirring and she said why didn't you get me i said because i was fine i was up i was listening to traffic and my radio and stuff like that and um just kind of kept an eye on what's going on right you got to have communication and you got to have a way to defend yourself you have to that's part of preparedness if you are not allowed to carry a boomstick because maybe you made a mistake somewhere in your life and uh those rights have been temporarily or permanently taken away from you uh, then what are your other options? Pepper spray, uh, what, you know, you need to consult your lawyer. If you're in one of those situations, don't take my advice. I'm, this is not legal advice, but you do need to have a way to protect yourself. You really do. Um, and there are legal options for people that can't own a firearm. And if you don't like firearms and if you're not comfortable with firearms, there are other alternatives. They're not going to be as effective as firearms, but it's, it's better than nothing, right? A baseball bat and pepper spray is better than nothing at all. Yeah, they are getting harder to find. Penny pin pinching prepper, cars with manual transmissions. And that's right. They're easier to drive in the snow and ice and things like that. Yes, right there. That's that's what I'm talking about, Broken Bushcraft, right? Do you know where those things in your city are? Do you know where the shelters are? Uh, Gunville, good for joining. Thank you for joining us. Pre appreciate you. Appreciate you. Yeah, times are getting a little tough, aren't they? Um, glad you're here. Glad you're glad you're joining us. All right. Uh, yes, and yeah, and by by radio, I don't necessarily mean like comms, although that's a good idea too. Uh, like just radio walkie talkies can be fine in most situations, but if you want to get into something a little bit more, you could do amateur radio or bow fangs, things like that. Um, but you definitely need a way to listen to the radio. For emergency broadcasts and things like that and that can be uh, a crank radio a solar radio or a battery powered radio if you've got you know enough batteries or a way to recharge your batteries like with our solar power bank and our panels i've got rechargeable batteries that like basically i could i'll never run out of them until basically the solar power bank gets worn out which would take thousands of cycles All right, next one, and this is the last one, is a little bit different than the other 11, is uh, side hustle, right? Side hustle. So 
Um, this is a part of preparedness as well. Have a skill that's marketable at least, even if you're not using it and selling it right now, but have another way to generate income, right? Besides your main job. So for example, my main job is I am a psychotherapist. Well, what happens if things get real bad and, and my work gets shut down? Do I have any income? Do I have any savings? Do I have another way to generate income, right? So you need to think about this. And actually, the more side hustles you have, the more financial security you will have, right? So nowadays, so much easier to have a side hustle than it was 30 years ago because the internet makes, there's people out there that are looking for somebody to do things from their home. I make, I've made some money, like several hundred dollars this year, just on doing surveys, believe it or not, right? Um, there's, um, you start a YouTube channel, right? Um, start a podcast. Uh, yeah, it's not going to like be a ton of money up front, but you work, you know, you start working on it. Uh, everybody's an expert on something, right? I do consultations in the mental health community and I charge money for that. And I can do that from my home if I need to, right? I can do it through phone calls. I can do it through, through video conferences. Uh, everybody out there has a, says some kind of expertise. Somebody else needs that expertise. You can use that as a consultant. You can sell that expertise, right? If you're good at repairing things, that is a marketable skill. Um, but you got to have a side hustle. You got to, one way to make income is a dangerous game these days. It really is. This economy is so screwed. They continue to talk about that we're not in a recession. Yeah, BS. We are so in a recession. We've been in a recession for a long time. They just don't want to acknowledge it because it's very bad for politics to acknowledge that we're in a recession. And it's not going to, we're not getting out of this anytime soon. Do Will we get out of it? I sure hope so. And I think so. And I, you know, I still might, I, what am I prepping for? I'm prepping because I want to retire. So I'm hoping for, but it's not, we're not getting out of it. Probably the end of 2023, maybe, maybe sometime in 2024, but that's, you know, that's being optimistic. All right. Let me check to see if we got anything else here. Uh, and then I'm going to start to close us out. Yeah, in this, uh, in my community, that doesn't really do us a whole lot of good. They're all, um, everything's encrypted now for all the first responders and things like that. Um, for a little while, we could still listen to the EMTs and paramedics, but I think they even encrypted that on us now. <laughs> Just reading your comments. That's right. Yeah, you want, you want to have... Uh, that not only is a backup, but for freedom, right? Nothing, nothing feels as good as being your own boss. Yeah, um, real commercial real estate because of the work that's that probably deserves its own stream, but because of the whole work from home phenomena, which I don't think is going away, um, there's tons of commercial real estate that's going to be available as more and more companies realize we don't need as much office space as we thought we did. All right, so last few things here. Let's, I'm going to wrap this up. If you're just tuning in now, I want to say again, thank you, everybody. Thank you for the mods for helping out. really appreciate you all. You all are awesome. Thank you, everybody, for the great suggestions. This was some great chat tonight, some great comments, great suggestions. You all really appreciate you all. Next Friday, I will not be live. Next Friday, I'll have a pre-recorded video for you. And also, remember, I've got that 5,000 subscriber giveaway that I'm starting to work towards. So, so pay attention for details towards that. And uh, there's going to be several different ways to win. And I'm working on some prizes for that. If you'd like to sponsor a prize, either for your channel or if you've got a business that you run and you'd like to sponsor it with have us promote your business as part of that giveaway, uh, just reach out to me, business, um, businesswithsarge at gmail.com. I think it's in the description as well. Want to end with our positive note here. All right. I love that broken, broken bushcraft. Positive note. So the la I always end our Friday night live streams with a positive message. So positive message for tonight is, um, oh, awesome. Thank you for your check. I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll get together so we can talk about that. Appreciate that. Um, positive message for tonight is don't panic, right? If you're brand new to prepping, again, I know that like you might look at channels and say, man, like Sarge has got some really good knives and his kit's really good. Again, I didn't start this year or yesterday, I've been doing this for a long time. I didn't acquire my kit overnight and don't feel like you have, I know this is easy to say this, but try to resist the urge to feel like I have to catch up. Okay. As much as we talk about like all these bad things that could happen, I honestly don't think it's tomorrow. I don't think the zombies are rising out of the grave tomorrow. I don't think the EMP is going to hit us tomorrow. 
I can't promise you, but I don't think it's going to happen, right? So go at your pace, stay within a budget. I say that over and over and over again on this channel, right? Yeah, I will show you some $200 knives sometimes. If you don't have it, don't buy a $200 knife. Don't use your credit card for that. There are some great knives under $40, right? There is some capable knives under $30, like Mora Knife. Mora Knife is a fantastic knife and it's under $30. Like everybody who's into wilderness survival, hiking, bushcraft should get a Mora knife. It is an amazing knife for under $30. Like, you know, yeah, I'll show you the $200 knives because I've, I've got some and I love them and they're awesome, but you don't necessarily need that. Okay. Um, same thing with flashlights, right? Like I'll show you a hundred dollar flashlight. Do you need a hundred dollar flashlight? Maybe not when you're starting out, you know, get work within your budget, stay within your budget. Do not use your credit card and blow it up thinking like I have to catch up. Same thing with the prepper pantry, right? You might see one of these videos with one of the channels and they've got like a whole basement filled with canned goods. They didn't do that in one day or a week or a month, okay? They worked their way towards it. So, so go at your pace, don't panic, stay within your budget and try not to get discouraged. I feel really confident that the end is not tomorrow. How much time do we have? Nobody knows, right? Like things look bad, things look pretty grim. So I would say don't procrastinate, but don't panic, okay? And that's my message for you tonight. And I really appreciate y'all. Have a blessed weekend. I see some people throwing out some blessings out there in chat. Really, that's awesome. Y'all are great people. Check out all the channels in chat. Really appreciate it. Everybody, I think just about everybody there, or almost everybody there is also a content creator. Many of them are also survival prepping bushcraft type of channels. So definitely check those out. And if you're watching this on replay, I hope you turned on the chat because if you didn't, you missed some great stuff. Keep planting your seeds, keep stacking your silver. This is Prepping with Sarge.